Hello everyone. Uh, so my talk should be relatively short, so you should have time for coffee, don't worry. Uh, I'm going to talk about the a general setting for shape deformation analysis and the LDDMM method. So if you don't know what LDDMM means, don't worry, no, nobody does it. <laughs> so, uh, so first, just a brief recall of what that method consists of. So you, we want to compare two shapes, Q0 and Q1, uh, in a Euclidean space in a way that takes into account their geometric properties. So for example, the smoothness or the number of self-intersections, things like that. So the initial shape Q0 is called the template, while Q1 is the target. And so here are some examples of shapes. You can take uh, landmarks, so just discrete shapes, set of points. Uh, you can take parametrized embedded, uh, embedded submanifolds. And uh, then what is a more logical, like a more intuitive definition of what the shape actually is would be uh, unparametrized uh, submanifolds, which uh, is just the, the space of embeddings quotiented by the space of diffeomorphisms, uh, that, uh, by the space of reparametrization. Um, okay, then the, the general method is you fix a Hilbert space of vector field that V that has continuous inclusion in the space of C1 vector field that go to zero at infinity, right? If you, uh, um, so this space, I don't describe it, but I just do everything from a very general point of view. So then if you have a time-dependent vector field that belongs to this space V and with uh, integrable square norm, it induces a unique flow, so a one-parameter family of a diffeomorphism that satisfies the following uh, equation. And then this family of diffeomorphism acts on the shape, on the initial shape, uh, in a natural way. So for example, with, with what I just gave above for the examples of shapes is just by composition and uh, then by differentiating with respect to time you obtain a control system where your control is just your um, the value of your vector field and then you minimize a cost function j of v which is given by the energy of the vector field plus some uh, data attachment that depends only on the completely deformed template uh, and it's a data attachment that gets smaller the closer the final shape is to our target shape. Right? So there's been a lot of work done on this kind of uh, data attachment, uh, but that's not what I'm going to talk about here. Uh, and so we, uh, we want to minimize this function over all control with integrable norm, if an integrable square norm. Uh, and so we get just an optimal control problem. Okay, so the thing is, we have a lot of examples of shape spaces, but no real general definition. So I thought it would be kind of nice to get a unifying framework for this kind of work, uh, for this method. So, um, for, for example, what if we want to track a vector field along the shape that would represent a fiber or something? So that's basically obvious how you apply it, you know, but in the end, like, you have to do all the work once again because uh, it's not part of the well-known examples. And same thing if you want uh, like shapes with parts of different dimensions, like, I don't know, a hairy ball or something. Uh, so I wanted to do something that kind of unified and extended all of this, all of what we had on LDDMMs, and so that for the future works, we just had to check that we were in that setting and everything would be done. Uh, so the key remark that, uh, that's going to guide all of my talk is that actually for, to define everything that I've, so what I've just described, this method, all we need is an action of the group of diffeomorphism on the space of shapes that does admit a kind of derivative with respect to time. So I'm going to, so, uh, in the end I'm going to study the group structure on, uh, I mean, yeah, the, the group structure on the space of diffeomorphism, which is a very specific group structure that has some nice properties, and then use those to uh, define a general uh, setting for shape spaces. All right. So the group of diffeomorphisms. So I'm going to consider mainly diffeomorphisms of sublevel regularity, 
and more precisely the connected component of the diffeomorphism of the identity of the uh, diffeomorphisms of sobolev regularity. So in other words, diffeomorphism that can just be written as identity plus some HS vector field where HS is the sobolev space. So that's a Hilbert manifold because it's just an open <coughs> subset of we have this theorem by Trouvé that uh, the metric space is complete and moreover if two diffeomorphisms can be joined by a curve, then they actually can be joined by minimizing geodesy. So that's a nice first step. Uh, now the question is, of course, what are the geodesics between two different ones? And actually, that's, uh, so it's an optimal control, but in infinite dimensions. And it's actually a pretty difficult problem uh, in general, because <coughs> uh, there is no Pontryagin maximum principle in infinite dimensions when we fix uh, the two endpoints, except for some very particular cases. So actually, there is no in in the in just if you take a random space V uh, that has continuous inclusion in the Sobolev vector uh, in the space of Sobolev vector field. Uh, there's no actual there's no general necessary condition to get um, a geodesic. However, we can turn things around and we can define a Hamiltonian no matter what. And we can study the, the flow of the Hamiltonian, and this will turn out to project onto geodesics. So we will get some geodesics, although there may be some that aren't included in the Hamiltonian. <coughs> so more precisely, uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, you denote by KV the isometry between the dual of V and V, uh, and so uh, if you take P in the dual of the Sobolev vector field which is basically uh, H minus S from R to R B. So for example, the Dirac, Dirac masses are included in there. Um, <coughs> P also belongs to the dual of V, and so we get a vector field KVP that corresponds to uh, taking the, uh, yeah, that's the mm -hmm. case. And uh, we know that in this case, KV is given by convolution with a certain kernel, so uh, vector, uh, matrix valued, uh, function with two variables, like this. And now we define the Hamiltonian uh, of, uh, so we take P, which is a covector, and phi a diffeomorphism, and we, we can see that the value of the Hamiltonian that corresponds to our dynamic is given by half of the square norm of this vector field. So here P is, a cove is uh, in the dual of HS, <coughs> But since you're at phi, you have to actually pull it back by uh, the right composition by phi. And so you get the following formula, which is actually like, kind of nice as long as you know the curve. Um, <clears throat> and now what we can see, so this is actually, I, I forgot to say it, it's a theorem proven by me and Emmanuel Trella uh, from uh, Jussieu. Uh, so if we assume that the vector fields in V are smoother than the minimal smoothness, more precisely like two, more, uh, like two orders more than the minimum, then the Hamiltonian geodesic flow is well defined, it's also complete, so it exists for all time, and the corresponding curves, so the projection to uh, the space of diffeomorphisms, are geodesics on small enough intervals. However, as I said, uh, this may not, we may not capture all of the shortest paths uh, in this kind of structure because we are in a sublimated uh, Also, we can apply the Euler-Poincaré reduction, reduction to get a momentum formulation. So if we define the momentum map uh, simply as the pullback of, of P by, uh, by phi, at the point phi P, so we still get uh, something in H minus, in the dual of HS. Uh, then we see that the curve, uh, a curve uh, T gives phi of T, P of T, follows the Hamiltonian flow if and only if the corresponding momentum follows this uh, dual Euler Poincare equation, this Euler Poincare equation. Uh, and uh, moreover, as a consequence, uh, this should be phi of t. So, but we can we get an explicit uh, we get uh, the integral version of this differential equation that the the momentum at time t is just the push forward of the momentum at time zero, which actually allows us to uh, deduce a lot of uh, 
of things and this momentum, for example, its regularity is preserved and uh, uh, its support is just deformed by the deformation itself. So for example, if at time zero, the momentum is a sum of n vector value Dirac masses, uh, then mu of t will also be a sum of vector value, of n vector value Dirac masses. Um, all right, so just as a remark, because of the fact that we're in sub-Riemannian geom geometry, like we can't uh, go, to, we can't um, translate this equation into an equation on the vector field uh, itself, uh, as you would do, for example, for the um, uh, Euler e equation of fluid mechanics or something, um, <clears throat> because you actually have some times where um, you can have different value of the initial momentum, which yield the same value of the initial vector field, but such that actually the vector fields uh, go apart from one another. So right, you, uh, you can actually have geodesics that have the same initial velocity, but which are different. So, <coughs> okay, now, uh, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's almost done. It's almost done. Okay. Uh, so a shape space. Well, I'm just gonna, so all I need is an action of the group of diffeomorphism. <laughs> On the space. So a shape space is a Banner manifold on which the uh, group of diffeomorphisms acts continuously such that, first of all, the action is smooth on the left, which allows us to define an infinitesimal action of vector fields. And second of all, uh, the smoother we take the diffeomorphism, the smoother the action becomes. Right? So, of course, all classical examples are shape spaces. Of and uh, moreover, uh, the, the group of diffeomorphisms itself is a shape space. The product of any two shape space is a shape space, and the tangent space of any shape space is, uh, I mean, the tangent bundle of any shape space is also a shape space. So this gives us uh, a lot of extra things to study. Uh, however, the space of images is not a shape space because this action doesn't satisfy the previous properties but it can still be treated by kind of cheating a little. Uh, uh, okay, now if we take LDDMMs, so uh, we fix a space of a Hilbert space of vector fields, we can define uh, the action and the infinitesimal action, so we get a control system of, that deforms the shape, and we want to uh, minimize this functional. And so again, we get just an optimal control problem. Uh, and what we see is that actually, if the vector fields in V are uh, smooth enough, then a control is a critical, so a critical point of J induce, are uh, exactly those that induce um, a Hamilton, like a Hamiltonian geodesic with momentum at n time given by just the, um, the differential <laughs> of, the, uh, of the data attachment term. And moreover, like the, the momentum can be written just as a pullback of some covector on the space of shapes at each time. Uh, so we can then define the Hamiltonian uh, on the shape. We can also define the Hamiltonian on the shape space, and uh, we can deduce a Hamiltonian equation. And this is very useful because the shape space in practice will be finite dimensional when we actually do numerical analysis. So we actually get a, a finite dimensional. Uh, problem. Um, <clears throat> okay, and of course we can, so that's uh, one first step of reduction and we can reduce things even further if we take into account some additional symmetries of the uh, momentum. All right, and uh, yeah, thank you for your attention. Thank you, so you have, yeah, one question. Hi. Um, Hi. Uh, because of finite dimensional thinking, I didn't quite follow how you ended up calling the initial description when you were quoting Alain Trouet's uh, theorem as sub Riemannian because I, I didn't see any obvious constraint that you put on it. Okay, so they're not so, constrained. Right. The constraints are parametrized. But you can, like, so um, it's because I took, like, I took an abstract, like, uh, some kind of random space V. For example, assume you take uh, the space of uh, 
so V can be uh, the space of uh, HS vector fields that cancel on a, that uh, are orthogonal to a certain distribution. Uh -huh. You know, so you mean that's included in this case. Ah, okay. Sorry, that's where it was. Okay, so thank you. Okay, one more burning question. So, so in subramanian geometry, usually there's uh, quite a lot that we, we can learn about the problem if you look at the graded algebra, which is generated by the... So what, what in this case, what, what can you learn there? Because your, your uniqueness problem for the, the initial boundary value problem is, I mean, you can you can get, get around it if you, if you look also at the value in the, well, the, the initial jet with higher order uh, differential. So what, what, how does it come into play here? There are several issues. So first of all, like V can be can have dense image. Uh, like that's uh, that's gonna uh, be harder. Also, just brackets of vector fields are not really how you want to approach. Uh, like at least this, from the Subramanian point of view, uh, this this thing. Because for example, if you take HS plus one vector field, right, and you look at their bracket you obtain an HS vector field, okay? But on the other hand, when you, so, so but on the other hand, when you integrate uh, all the possible HS vector fields, uh, HS plus one vector field, you only get HS plus one diffeomorphisms, <coughs> right? So the, it would look like uh, by taking the bracket, you, you can go from HS plus one vector fields to HS diffeomorphisms. Right? Because when you take that bracket, you get an HS vector field. And actually, in practice, you can't, because that's not uh, a good Basically, it's not a good parameterization. So, um, in infinite dimensions, you know, you can, like, you don't know if the number of brackets that you're going to need to take is finite. You don't know uh, a lot of things that can go really wrong. So, uh, usually, we do, like, we take, um, we go from the cotangent point of view, which is like always well defined, although, as I said, it's missing a lot of geodesics. And those geodesics, you won't be able, you won't always be able to find them just by doing brackets. But brackets, like from a mathematical point of view, it's going to be really hard in infinite dimensions. Okay, thank you very much, and thank you all for your participation. So.